So, hello, fantastic audience. We're going to talk about the commons, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, but I still think that it merits speaking about. And being at Open Co-op, we will talk also about co-ops and how they relate to each other. So, the commons, when the human instinct to collaborate, and social Darwinists may argue that it doesn't exist, but I do, when the human instinct to collaborate ripens into stable, recognizable forms, we have the act of commoning. So what are the commons? Many answers could be given. I want to throw out to you that the commons are living systems for communities to meet their needs. Living systems. I'm not talking about resources yet, as you will see. Now, how do living systems work? Usually through relationships. So what types of relationships do we find in the commons? First of all, among communities, large and small, and at different levels, but also relationships between humans and then non-human world, and relationships between the present, the past, and the future. The commons are embedded by context. Markets, the state, they would externalize the content and only talk about economic measurable activity. The commons brings in all these other dimensions. So where are the commons? So the commons are everywhere. It is estimated that two billion people derive their sustenance from natural resource commons. And we could hazard a guess that a similar number of people are co-creating, at different levels, shared resources on the internet. So I've just given you about half of the planet's population, you know, this very like, hey, here we are. Do they recognize themselves within the commons or as commoners? No, but we do recognize those patterns. Examples include community managed forests, um, cooperative agriculture, people who are designing things online and distributed manufacturing, making these things in places. And this is not just like super high-tech 3D printing, but also crafts. And also community currencies. It's important to talk about the commons and to see what unites all these very different manifestations. Because understanding the commons, things that are totally impossible under capitalism suddenly become viable. The way that we can talk about the commons is through patterns. Now, patterns are very different from blueprints. Here is my blueprint. I am a man. Here's my great blockchain architecture that will allow us to have like great decentralized systems. And you puny little humans have to fit in within this, I would say, like almost Masonic understanding of the world. Okay? So, patterns describe, they do not prescribe. And we can see similar patterns. So, for example, if you're part of a community-supported agriculture group in Spain, maybe you're facing many of the same problems as a similar CSO in the United States. But, of course, your context, your culture is different. Patterns allow us to share solutions to problems. The solutions do have some universalities. Ideologies are not universal. Patterns applied to different contexts are. And to get into a more precise definition of the commons, I will offer three patterns. For there to be a commons, we need three elements. So, astroniums, here we are. We need a resource. And if you don't like the extractivist connotations of the word resource, you can say gift. And in fact, the etymology of commons comes from the Latin munus, which means gift and responsibility. So this already puts you in a totally different playing field with resources. The resources are there, and markets or the state are there to enclose them or to exploit them, etc. But in the commons, those resources, which may be digital, they may be material, immaterial, I mean, all commons are both material and immaterial. I don't believe in that division. These resources are held in stewardship and developed by a community that gathers around this resource or this gift. And this community can meet face to face, or maybe they meet through the internet, transnationally. Who's part of more than one collective over here? Who identifies with being part of more than one group? Okay? So maybe some of your groups have in the affinity networks. 
over the internet. Maybe some of them is people that you meet at the pub and you create something of value. So resource, community, and rules. The rules made by whom? By the community. So if you want the elevator speech of the commons, and that would be very unsatisfactory for anyone to explain the commons in an elevator, but you will have a resource governed by a community according to the rules and the norms of that community. Not the market, not the state, even though it often has to interact with them. So resource, community, rules. If you think about Wikipedia, the resource would be universal knowledge, the community, the editors, the readers, the people at the Wikimedia Foundation, and the rules, what they've made up over the span of 15 years. If you want to think about your edible forest garden, the resource would be the trees and the fruits that you harvest from these trees. The community, the people who are taking care of it, who are eating what they're picking up, and the rules, what they've worked out according to their criteria. P2P, peer-to-peer, -peer, is often used exchangeably with the commons, but they are not the same thing. Peer-to-peer -peer talks about more complex systems that usually take place over the internet. But when I say the internet, maybe you're imagining this great technological framework of computers talking to each other. But what about the bodies behind those computers? What about the people? So we say person-to-person, people-to-people, peer-to-peer. P2P systems enable the act of commoning at other scales. So again, if we take Linux, if we take the Apache web server, how do we apply these distributed systems that create objects or commons of great value? How do we apply this to politics? How do we apply it to markets? And on the subject of markets, let's talk about co-ops. So the commons precede co-ops by millennia. I was at an event. I was at an event um, last week. Oh, the commons has been going on for thousands of years. Well, maybe with that name. But governing resources in a community according to its own norms, I would say that that is the function of like higher apes and maybe even animals. So the commons is the de facto mode of social organization. But the commons somehow got codified into a mechanism that could interact with markets. And here we have cooperatives. So you can see the timeline. From the commons, which is fascia, here we have a stable legal form, which is the co-op. But two and a half, three centuries on, it seems that co-ops have forgotten a bit about the commons. So how do you mix, how do you bring back the commons into the cooperative sphere? Within that platform, co-ops are a first stage. They're like the hard sort tip of the change that we need to see. But the thing about platform co-ops is that it does not talk about what you're doing with your productive capacities. Let's make a peer-to-peer -peer Uber. Let's make a more democratic Airbnb. But are you talking about transportation? Are you talking about housing? What are you doing with your time? What are you doing with your co-op? What we offer is open cooperativism, which brings all the influences from the open source sphere and mixes them with the rich cooperative tradition and the social solidarity economy. Open co-ops are characterized by four patterns, once again, which are not prescriptive. No one from the P2P Foundation will give you a medal if you have like this great open co-op. But according to your material conditions of what's going on in your co-op, you can contemplate using some of these patterns. The first one is that in the statutes, they're oriented towards the common good. The common good is kind of like a bullshit phrase, and I would change that because everyone says that, you know, like, this is the common good, etc. So let's talk about um, social and ecologically viable outcomes that are brought about through the activity of your cooperative. This is usually what we externalize. We externalize social concerns, we externalize ecological concerns. Within an open co-op, this is part of your identity. This is what you want to do with your time. They're also multi-stakeholder, and if you don't like that word, you can say multi-constituent in nature. And what this means is that everybody in the value chain is being enfranchised. So this is our co-op, this is what we produce. What about the reproductive labor? What about the bodies? What about the invisible and the care work that is happening in various places to allow you people in the co-op to have this thing? Models of this, which are worth mentioning quickly, I would say fair shares, Emilia Romagna, Quebec, you have different levels of stakeholder involvement and 
to a certain degree, they have a vote on the economic activities that affect everyone. Third, an open co-op actively co-creates commons. It does not just take from the commons, it leaves behind a trail of commons. This can be the documentation of what you do, this can be creating common pool resources, whether they're software, this can be the effective dimension that is tacit but communicating, that is a commons. And the fourth thing is that they're locally embedded but globally oriented. While it's very important to go local, I'll give you an example. Here's my great permaculture garden, and here's my neighbor with his Monsanto Terminator seeds. And here is the wind that blows over the Monsanto seeds to my garden, and then I get sued. So this is a silly example, but we cannot afford to just have lifeboat strategies. If you think about it, um, the big bad boys of the software world, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, um, their market cap combined is three trillion. All cooperatives in the world combined have a similar market cap. But we're not talking together. The cooperative principle of cooperation amongst cooperatives has been somewhat lost. Maybe we can regain this through the commons. And look, human beings, there's actually people doing open cooperativism. In Spiral, who are here today, Sensorica, who are going to be here, Fermondo, the mutual aid network, there's no shortage of examples. Why are open co-ops important? Because they put common in, in the heart of this economic activity. Platform co-ops are very important, yes, but they also assume a stable economic and social backdrop. And the world that we live in is anything but stable. The more that we practice common in, the more that we decrease our dependency on the market and the state, the more resilient we will be. Not just for good enough futures, but for better futures. I will leave you with that, and this has been somewhat theoretical, but now Monica is going to tell you about some real experiences on the ground. So thank you. So I'm going to talk about two projects, two ideas, the five pillars of the common sustainability, which is N N Tashidara Net, which is a project. The first one, the five pillars of the common sustainability, is uh, the work of FKI, Free Knowledge Institute, uh, which is a foundation based in Amsterdam, um, that we are uh, developing several digital um, commons projects, uh, mainly from Barcelona, also from Rome. Um, most of the team is here today. There's Walter Tevens, David Gomez, and Marco Fioretti, and, um, and myself. And we've been thinking about the models of, uh, for the sustainability of commons projects for a while. And um, we have um, come up with a result, which I'm going to talk about today, which is this model of the five pillars um, of the um, commons, of the sustainability of the commons. We first um, started to think about it while developing Digital Do It Yourself, a um, European project between 2015 and 17, in which hardware projects were analyzed uh, to maximize the potential for collaboration replication, reuse, and personalization. Later, um, this model was tested in La Comunificadora, which is a program for a support program by Barcelona Activa, which is uh, in the Barcelona City Council, to help promote the ch a change in the direction of the collaborative economy by returning it to the commons production through the distribution of the generated value and an open governance. And we have now brand two editions of this um, um, uh, support program. We are about to brand the third one, which is going to start after summer. We further tested this model in the um, courses on uh, platform cooperativism, which we have been um, developing this year. We have done two editions already, and it is also guiding us in the creation of Fempro Comuns, all of these things um, are there. Fempro Comuns is a 
uh, multi-stakeholder cooperative, which um, we are uh, we have just created um, for commoners to overcome legal, economic, and management hurdles uh, to develop their projects. We it was set up in 2008. 17 in Barcelona and in 2018 we have just started economic activity. So we go to um, the five pillars. At the center, uh, as Stacco was saying, we have the gift and responsibility, the shared resource, um, which uh, is a combination of the resource which is being produced, reproduced and managed. And we have the community as well that shares the resource and uh, we have the rules and regulations that the community follows. This um, model um, we are using to see why certain projects uh, are sustainable or not. So we are using it as an analysis tool and we are also using it um, to see how to make new sustainable projects or transform already existing ones. So we are using it as a prototype tool and it can identify and admit uh, hybrid solutions, which are not commons, but are commons oriented. So at the center is what I just said, and then there are uh, two axes uh, with four pillars, which um, have to be balanced to achieve uh, sustainability. Uh, first, the first ax is the production mode will allow um, different resources or revenue streams. So you see, the, in the production mode, uh, we can have different modes of production, such as uh, within the organization, intra-firma, in the market, in inter-cooperation, and among peers, like P2P production, this third model that we are talking about. And um, it will define what resources, so the uh, production model that we use will define what resources or revenue streams the project can use or needs. What costs can it save by using these resources and how can it make the resource sustainable or depleted? So the second axe, well, the revenues in this um, pillar can come from subscriptions, from uh, payment in exchange of a service, from physical, of selling a physical product, from donations, from crowdfunding, from match funding, from sharing costs with other projects, etc. The second axe is um, when the, the project is easier to share, it is easier to replicate, the level of democratic governance is usually higher. Um, sharing knowledge is at the same time an element of pressure, pressure and a guarantee of the model and the good practices of governance and the mechanism of participation and decision making. So the way um, knowledge is shared will depend very much on the sort of contents that we are sharing. If we are sharing creative commons, uh, a sort of license will apply. If it's software, if it's modifications to a software, if it's data, machinery, methodologies, or what we call tacit knowledge, um, competencies and abilities, which we will share through uh, training, for example. And governance um, is how uh, can the project be democratic. So it will depend on the sort of legal entity that we are using, if it is a cooperative, it's, um, if it is an association, a federation, a um, um, foundation, etc. Then also the uh, governance is determined by how to become a member, uh, who has the capital, if there is capital, uh, what are the decision-making uh, mechanisms, um, etc. So this model can seem complex. Uh, we normally uh, explain it through like five-week training program, but um, I just uh, presented it in two minutes. And um, sometimes it's a bit um, complex and boring. And what we have done is we have developed a funnier and more playful way uh, to learn it. It's um, a card game inspired with, uh, by this model. We call it the game of the commons economy. And it is to learn how to prototype projects mainly. We also uh, have been implementing a new methodology of trying the dress of the commons. Uh, to see if the dress fits your project. Uh, so we embody the idea of the, um, the five pillars. Um, when prototyping a project, 
the individuals play the role of at least three different uh, personas, which can respond to different uh, role in the governance of the project or different stakeholders as well. And then the group collectively defines which will be the, its role in, its pillar, in each pillar. In all of these uh, new P2P co-creation methodologies, there's always someone taking notes, a bit like we did today, or we tried to do today through the um, Drive, the Google Drive uh, documents, um, because uh, we have found that it is key in the definition of a prototype um, to create a choral and collective narrative uh, to which we can go back later if it is written down. So we write this down on pads and uh, upload them to Teshidora, which Teshidora Net is this other project that I want to talk about for two minutes. It is a digital platform for collaborative live writing in community events, and it is a project that's being led by David Gomez and myself. Um, it connects, connects distributed knowledge generated by communities of practice, like today, basically by collectively taking notes in chronological order or uh, in structured way, it depends on each session. It helps, it helps produce collective narrative, follows, follow what happens, and weave relationships by sharing knowledge. It is based uh, on several applications um, and devices, which it appropriates and combines. It is a semantic media wiki, which is an extension of the popular um, open source media wiki application developed by Wikimedia Foundation. Um, Etherpad, a web-based uh, collaborative real-time editor. Two bots that we have just uh, developed and are available for everyone. Um, and they automatically upload information to the agenda and also from the pads to the wiki. So the information collected today would be uh, automatically uploaded. And we also use microblogging uh, platforms like Twitter and Twitter. Just two examples of how this works or how we are using it. We can map organizations, projects, individuals, common interests in common sectors or geographically close in um, real time um, um, events. And uh, also to um, extract knowledge from meetings such as common challenges, threats, or objectives that we can uh, all come up with. And just to come back to the common sustainability model, uh, thinking about Tashidora, Tashidora is an example of a tool we are using to share knowledge and to affect and determine governance in projects. And we are doing it mainly using uh, P2P production modes and community resources. And that's it. Um, Brilliant, thank you for that. So that's, that's absolutely loads to get your teeth into. If you are starting to formulate questions, please hold on to them. So we've got one more presenter. I'll ask um, Guillaume to speak and then we'll go into a Q&A. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to speak uh, half of theory because uh, I'm a PhD student at the same time, so I can't help talking about theory. And also about uh, a project that we uh, started uh, uh, less than uh, one year ago in France, uh, which is called the uh, Platform en Commun. Uh, so first, uh, as I said, uh, let, we started from, a, from a, something we, we noticed, as you may have all noticed in, the, in this room, I, I suppose, is that uh, fair platforms uh, face big difficulties to, uh, to strive. Uh, most of them uh, struggle finding uh, uh, a critical mass of users. Uh, most of them are still figuring out their uh, model not only business model, but also uh, the governance model and the legal uh, way to operate. Uh, it's also sometimes hard to, to access fundings. Uh, first, because uh, when you are not a conventional uh, like uh, for-profit uh, organization, it's sometimes hard to find initial uh, capital. But of course, uh, when you are in the platform economy and when sometimes you have uh, high sunk costs at the beginning, uh, it's even harder to, uh, to get fundings. And uh, we also noticed, even in the platform cops, some uh, difficulties uh, inherent to the, to the platforms. For example, uh, how can you really involve the whole community uh, when you claim to be a, a platform uh, co-op or in commons? And uh, there are also uh, in our controversies, such as uh, do all resources need to be uh, open source and, and shared? 
uh, or uh, can you have uh, some proprietary uh, forms? Uh, also about the reciprocity process, uh, how do you uh, ensure that uh, everyone uh, finds uh, it's uh, fair to uh, contribute and, uh, to, and find it uh, uh, fair to re receive also uh, in the meantime. And so, of course, we also noted that uh, some platform co-ops uh, tend to replicate the dominant model of platforms, whereas other ones um, try to uh, innovate and find uh, uh, new models, that's what we wanted to, uh, to explore. And uh, also what we noticed is that uh, many platforms uh, need uh, some, some things like meeting between peers, creating a community of like-minded actors, and also to share practices in between uh, each other. And, uh, and of course it's not, about, uh, it's not only about knowledge, but also how can you uh, pool resources, share resources, and have a, a common voice. And that's uh, uh, to answer these uh, challenges that the uh, platform uh, En Commun uh, was born. So we were launched uh, in uh, December 2017, so not uh, a long time ago, uh, by uh, an association called La Cop des Communs, which tries to, um, to bound the uh, social and solidarity economy actors with uh, commons uh, uh, activists and, uh, and people who practice commons on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis to see what new, model can, uh, new, new models can uh, come out of uh, this uh, mix. And uh, so we uh, brought together uh, a different uh, number of uh, platform uh, co-ops or platform en commun, which define themselves as uh, commons. And uh, we can also say that we are somehow a, a learning community because we are mixing uh, research and action in the meantime uh, through a, a horizontal uh, sharing of experience by the platforms themselves, but also with a, a network of uh, activists, experts that uh, find an interest in that, uh, that topic. And so to sum up, we, we can say that we are a, a common square because uh, we uh, gather uh, different platforms who uh, consider themselves as, uh, as commons, building uh, a community and trying to, to put uh, the control of this platform in the hands of their users. Uh, but we are also ourselves a commons because our goal is to uh, so, uh, bring all these platforms together to decide uh, collectively uh, what they, which kind of resources they want to, uh, to foster and, uh, and share. Uh, uh, be it uh, like information resources, but also uh, technical tools. And so, uh, as I said, we are at the crossroads of different worlds, social solidarity economy, commons, the sharing economy with the platform model, uh, and also uh, activists from the free software uh, movement. And so our network is uh, composed by these platforms, so there are about uh, 15. Uh, Cop Cycle, for example, uh, is a, a part of the, of the network. You, you saw their presentation uh, this morning. Uh, but we have uh, platforms in a very, uh, a very various range of uh, sectors. Um, for example, in the bike delivery sector, we also have another uh, initiative called Applicoli. Uh, you have fair booking. I suppose you, you quite guess what they are doing. Uh, a Puig, which is from Belgium, and, and uh, is trying to, uh, to build a platform where you can uh, exchange uh, goods and services, and, uh, and, and so on. Uh, so the philosophy of the project is uh, that we, as we consider ourselves other commons, we, the, the project will depend on what we collectively want to do, and, uh, and is based on a, a fair contribution model. So our goal is to build an ecosystem of platform, uh, and also enable the emergence of uh, new projects, but it's also to create commons that our community can, can use uh, and, of course, uh, experiment what we're doing because we believe that peer-to-peer -peer, uh, exchange is not only based on uh, goods, services, or, uh, or tools, but also on knowledge. Uh, and so all these platforms are, uh, are, uh, share the same uh, values. We have a, a charter uh, that shapes the community, uh, and, uh, of course, it's an uh, ever-evolving uh, charter, it's not uh, fixed, but uh, the goal is to have this common vision of, of uh, who we are and what we want to do. So the, the, there are five main uh, aspects on this uh, charter. Uh, I can uh, put more uh, details uh, on that uh, later on if you want to know more. Uh, 
but we have this uh, specificity to, uh, we insist on the fact that these platforms uh, must uh, product uh, some comments because uh, our uh, uh, belief is that uh, you can only develop alternative platforms if you create coalitions between, uh, between actors. And of course, this, uh, these coalitions are also not only about creating commons, but also to share uh, uh, things together and to uh, create yeah, coalitions. So what we've done so far, uh, so the community was uh, born out of an initial uh, conference uh, we had in Paris last December, and out of it, uh, 15 platforms uh, wanted to contribute and to, uh, to join the community and so we organized inter-platform meetings to get to know each other more and uh, after that we decided to launch uh, three uh, big uh, uh, working groups uh, where the platforms could uh, share knowledge about three uh, specific aspects. Uh, one was about the governance and legal uh, aspects, another one on the economic models and fundings, and another one was more focused on technical resources uh, such as software, and uh, yeah, well, you can see. And so what we realized so far is that uh, in our community there are uh, really innovative models and practices that are emerging. Uh, so we, you mentioned the multi-stakeholder model. We can see that most of our platforms uh, are uh, building uh, this kind of uh, governance uh, model. Uh, we notice also that uh, some of these initiatives uh, aim at building federations. Uh, there, like there is a platform above, and then through, for example, licenses or specific uh, processes, uh, different actors or cooperatives, for example, can use this uh, shared uh, resource. Uh, so we also notice that these platforms uh, rely themselves on, on charters to uh, to uh, define the boundaries also of the community and. Uh, and create involvement. Uh, they also use uh, often tools like uh, Lumio, Cobudget that you are familiar with, I suppose. Uh, and also, of course, because they lack resources, they are trying to find ways to, uh, to innovate, to get more uh, funding, so maybe through conscious participation uh, when they uh, offer uh, uh, services, uh, but also relying on crowdfunding or uh, these kinds of, uh, of other uh, funding schemes. And so what are the needs now? It's to first to stabilize the models that are, as I said, emerging, not really clear and still evolving. Uh, then we have a, a big focus on building uh, practical tools because we first focus on the big uh, issues and uh, it was more uh, like a, uh, an information, uh, sharing information about our models, but now we need to, to build more concrete tools and, uh, and of course to build also alliance with uh, uh, actors such as the public actors or big social and solidarity economy uh, institutions. And so what's next for the next month? Uh, we decided collectively, we voted on, uh, on operational projects and these projects, uh, you, can, you can see them, uh, they are listed here. Uh, so one on accounting, new models of uh, accounting, uh, uh, more um, convenient for uh, commons and more uh, yeah, linked with these uh, practices. Also a reflection on interoperability between the platform, which kind of first uh, mapping the, the, um, the quality of the, of the data available and uh, what are their nature and seeing whether we can share some of this data to, uh, to, to build more uh, efficient services, uh, things like that. Uh, so the third one is more dedicated to, to the legal status uh, for open governance, which is quite new. Uh, and, and so, yes, you can see the other uh, projects listed under. And of course, we'll continue our work building a network, sharing practices. Uh, another uh, main focus may be on how can we communicate together and, uh, and raise awareness about this alternative model promoted by platform co-ops and, uh, and uh, co uh, platforms are as commons, which is, uh, I think, uh, a pressing issue now that the models are be becoming to, to merge. And uh, we had also a reflection whether we should uh, develop some kind of brand or label. Uh, we are still thinking about that, but of course you have to do things uh, one at a time 
one at a time, so that's not the first uh, focus uh, now. So you can follow us on our website, on Twitter, uh, and uh, if you are French speaking, we also have a, a mailing list. Thank you. So when we talk about multi-stakeholder cooperatives as a, as a key a model for, for commons uh, governance, um, could that the, the multi-stakeholder-ness of it be the relationship between different types of co-ops? So could we still have worker co-ops, single stakeholder type, but that the multi-stakeholder nature comes from a federation of worker co-ops and different types of single stakeholder types? Okay, brilliant question. And then um, I had one up at the front here, just, uh, oh, this gentleman here was first. Hi, um, I have a question relating back to Nathan's uh, presentation earlier this morning and uh, what Guillaume was pointing out that a lot of platform cooperatives have difficulties um, with relatively few users and it's hard to imagine a platform cooperative um, uh, replacing Facebook for example uh, or I myself don't use Resonate because the artists I listen to are not on there. So there seems to be a particular platform effect uh, that seems, or is maybe even stronger than the network effects of previous economies. And I'm wondering what to do about it. It seems that in a localized context, like in New York City house cleaning or local cycle deliveries, this seems to work better. And bringing it to Stacco's presentation, whether the boundaries need to be very localized for this to work, or what, what are uh, success factors? And I think my question is particularly aimed at Stacco. Okay. But if anybody else wants to answer to that, I would be very Perfect. happy as well. Perfect. Those are two great questions to kick us off with. Would anyone like to take the multi-stakeholder one first? Yeah, does anybody who knows the most about this? I don't want to drop anyone. I'm not an expert on cooperatives at all, but I can tell you about uh, what we are doing. We are uh, creating a cooperative in which we have workers and consumers, and and also um, some of the members are neither, and they are collaborative um, members. Um, we have created this to, um, to make the projects that we were already working on um, more viable, more sustainable, in a, in, a, um, in a better condition for all of us, which uh, we were working as um, freelancers, and we were already uh, producing projects that were um, happening, but uh, we had this time in the middle of different projects in which we were doing all this um, caring and reproducing um, hours or work that wasn't accounted for. And now we are, uh, through the cooperative, we are continuing to work um, in these projects and also um, making viable new projects that we couldn't make before um, by having a more complex um, labor structure and managerial structure. If that answers a bit. This is what we are doing. Yeah. yeah, about the multi-stakeholder model. Uh, I think the fact is that it's, uh, it's uh, intuitively, uh, it seems to be more uh, appropriate uh, for platforms because platforms, uh, most of them, uh, have different types of, uh, of users, uh, but of course it's not always the case, so it, do, it doesn't uh, necessarily uh, need to be a, a multi-stakeholder uh, uh, platform. Uh, but I think that it's a, it's a model that uh, fits uh, quite often with, this, uh, with the, um, the genuine uh, uh, architecture of, uh, of platforms. Uh, for example, in our network, we have a, a platform co-op which is about to be launched, which is called Oiseau de Passage. It's about tourism, and so they real, their offer is to, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, when you are a tourist, you can go to a city like Marseille or Poitiers in France, and they um, they gathered uh, people from the tourist sector. Uh, it can be accommodation, but also tourist guides and even. Uh, people who live there and who want to share uh, tales about their local city. And so they gathered, they said, okay, you need to uh, bring a, a, a collective of uh, 
of uh, people in this uh, in the tourist sector in your city, and then you will uh, you can have a, a share in the in the platform and and use it for your activities. But the platform gathers this collective, but also federation of uh, uh, professionals of the tourism sector because they found it uh, they found that this could be a, a good uh, way to uh, to broaden the the community involving uh, this federation, which are quite big, and they also uh, have a um, the uh, employees of the platform that will have also uh, specific shares. So you have like this uh, uh, constitutional uh, uh, representation of, uh, not constitutional, but you have all the, the, the stakeholders of the platform represented in the uh, governance uh, through this legal model. So that's why I think it's, this model is interesting, but of course it's not always uh, as a, a complex as that, and sometimes you can have a, a simple <laughs> cooperative. I hope that helps answer your question. Then the second one um, that we had had two elements and was um, directed at Stacker. One was around this challenge of gathering enough users on the platform, just checking that we've, we're, we're playing your question back right. Um, that is, that's a major issue. Um, and then the second one is sort of, the second part of that was relating to um, ca you know, the attractiveness of the platforms to people. So you know, when they're more niche, how do you attract those users in? Maybe there's an element of local and um, you know, non-local platforms in, within that. Do you want to speak to that? Oops. Yeah, it's not just taking existing platforms and say, okay, we've democratized the ownership, the governance, everything works. Um, I think that we have to find what's unique to the cooperative structure or to commons practices and make that, I don't want to say selling point, but make that the attractor. Also, a lot of these changes, and monetarily, we cannot compete, yet I would argue that the commons-based mode of production is more effective. So, you know, we're more scrappy. We can do more with less. There's the local dimension, which you were alluding to, which allows you to connect in ways that the big platforms that we know and probably don't love by this stage cannot do. But from a personal level, I think that it's worth trying, even if success is not immediate. Because change is not a lifestyle choice. It's often a survival necessity. And maybe some of these big platforms are not. And I'm, I'm not just talking about like digital platforms. I'm talking about networks in general, whether they're online, whether they're human. Um, the metrics of success that they use, to me, they're not valid. I would like to see, also to get back to like Combs' question, because he was alluding to this mutualization between co-ops, of governance between co-ops. So this is the kind of economic backbone that I will refer again to that, if you're really impressed by numbers, that three trillion market cap of co-ops. How can we learn to collaborate and mutualize? Well, there's a lot of knowledge in peer-to-peer -peer and in more modern manifestations of the commons that can help us do that. Would anyone else like to come in on that? So we'll take another couple of questions. Or are you well, yeah. happy to or not? <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely yeah. fine. No, but I think there is first uh, uh, the thing, like how do you communicate about these platforms? And of course, uh, I think there is a, uh, a space uh, for these platform cops uh, with all the scandals related to, uh, to big platforms. Then I think platform cops uh, in their model have the uh, answer to these uh, problems, for example, about uh, data, uh, yeah, like commercial use of data, I think platform co-ops have a, can have a different uh, perspective on that, and also about, of course, the conditions of uh, some of the gig workers. So there is first the communication side that I think is not uh, can be still extended, um, and but of course um, you can only uh, convince users if you have a, an efficient service, and I think it's uh, it's the first the main uh, aspect. Uh, and so I believe that with this uh, more local decentralized model, for example, with this federation of local actors using shared resources, I think this is a, a smart model that can uh, prove to be efficient, uh, maybe as, as efficient as big platforms uh, as we know them today. So maybe that's the criteria through which platform clubs can be better or at least equal. So maybe a different strategy for, for growth yeah. and how we do that. Um, yes, question at the front. So as an educator, I was really excited to hear about the game. You talked about the game yeah. that you've developed. So uh, like an introductory question is whether that has been translated into any other languages. 
Mm? Well into, I, I speak several I languages. It was in Catalan. So it was in Catalan. It, it was born in Catalan, yeah. and it has been translated into English. Great. So let's talk afterwards. And just more, more generally, um, again, coming from the perspective of an educator, I work at Schumacher College, and we use a number of tools like Theatre of the Oppressed and other tools for empowering and enabling communities to find their voice. So I'd be interested to hear from either the platform or anybody else out there of people who's working, uh, because often, like I found today, that, that it's been stimulating but abstract, yeah. too abstract from, from my taste, mm -hmm. and that in terms of people getting it, that very often an embodied pedagogy really helps. So I kind of invite collaboration and playfulness with anybody who wants to chat to me. Okay. And if you've got any specific tools, games, activities. I'll let Monica start to talk to that one because our next question was right at the back of the room. Yeah, so, yeah. So the other one, yeah. Do you want to? Yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah, I was going to say there's um, this game that we have developed, but there are others. And we were just talking yesterday that maybe we should do exactly what you just proposed, um, gathering and play. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go, there's a, a, a meet up in the pub at five about methods. Yeah. Um, so at six. Yeah, no, not today, but we do want to do like a multi ring circus of commons oriented games. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that we develop is called Commonspoly. So instead of having a city where you practice your rentier capitalism, you have the resources and you turn them from private to public. But instead of going back to this great welfare state that will not come back, you turn them from public into commons. And it's quite a didactic game because, you know, like people throw a six and it's like, yes, I've thrown a six. And it's like, it doesn't matter. What are you doing with the value created by your six with the rest of the people that you have to talk and create relationships with? Woo. So that's how you embody. And we usually play after giving a presentation in the commons. And there's all these ideas floating, but, you know, I want to like ground them in my experience. And through play, you get to, you get to not be yourself and you get to experiment with a lot more breathing room to try out things that may be uncomfortable in nature. So, so yay, yay, for, yay for games. <laughs> Great, some good ideas there. Um, so we had a gentleman at the back with a question. Yeah, thanks. Uh, sorry, just a bit of a probing question in the sense that we're talking about growing the commons, but I guess we're, speak, you're speak, we're speaking to the converted here. We're here because we believe in the commons. What I haven't heard enough of is around how we engage the other key players in society and the economy, namely, the household, you know, the, the general public, uh, the, you know, the, the market, the b businesses who will claim many of them, and, and understandably so that they really do want to change the world. And then, of course, the state, be that local or, or national or international, who are the vehicles for raising uh, funds for the common good, which is tax, and, and, and how you guys are doing or, you know, in terms of engaging the state in growing the commons because it's in everybody's interest to do so. It's an absolutely brilliant question. I'm going to give the panelists a little breathing time on it because um, we'll come back and get that answer. I saw another hand popping up and we'll take two and come back to them both together. This yeah, this one. It, it's great that we're seeing a lot of, starts to be clusters of people doing platforms and starting to share their efforts. But there's, there's still yet another level in which they could get together and start sharing. So we've got, um, Platform en commune in, in France. Um, in the UK, um, Co-ops UK have funded eight platform co-ops to, to get started. So they're a startup. And, and you have a open co-op in, in, in Spain. There's lots, lots of these things starting to happen. But what would be interesting would be to see whether they can start to collaborate. Because what I worry about is that everyone is going to be inventing the same wheels. And, and, and you know, everyone needs membership, every, you know, not all platforms, but a lot of platforms will want membership. They might want payments of some sort. Um, they might want decision making. And all these could be created as shareable microservices so that not every platform has to go and recreate the same things over and over again. So I'm, I'm interested in the question of, uh, how can the platform groups or cooperatives start to cooperate even further? Okay, brilliant. Two fantastic questions. Um, now, I'm not going to pick on anybody for the first one. I will let you volunteer. Um, so we had one which was, are we preaching to the converted? How do we get that buy-in? Anybody want to go first? I'm just going to pick on one of you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so this is a political question, so you've alluded to politics and you, you've spoken about the state. 
When I talk about open co-ops decreasing our dependence on state and market, this is not some anarcho-communist utopia, even though I think that those are great. In fact, I think that the commons can reinvent the state and markets. I mean, remember, there's been markets before capitalism. The state is a capitalist technology, the modern state that we have. So how do we engage with the state? So for me, it's the hacker mentality, where you repurpose existing systems for things that they were not designed for. Unless you think that this is a total theoretical approximation, I would point to Monica. Maybe she can talk about Barcelona and the municipalist movement. And at least at the regional level, how we are creating conditions for co-ops and commons to have more breathing room for them to, for them to coalesce into more stable forms. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I can talk. Um, well, it's the situation in Barcelona, um, it's similar to that of Madrid. We have a city council in both um, cities that are um, quite open to exploring new ways of doing economy, and uh, they are supporting um, several initiatives, and they are there. And there's also um, new means to uh, open up conversations to try to create new regulations that um, change the structure in the city. For example, in Barcelona, but also in Paris and in other cities, um, regulations are being um, created to uh, change the way that platform, um, extractivist platform um, groups are working, like Airbnb, etc. And so there are various means of changing things. I, I'm not going to make up um, a speech about it now, but um, I think that there are various means being explored. And also um, for us specifically, this um, program that we are doing to support uh, projects that are from the collaborative economy to accompany them towards the commons economy, it's being funded by the City Council, the Barcelona City Council. We do um, other projects that uh, are not funded by the City Council, but um, this specific one has been up till now in the two first editions. We are also looking at how to um, make sure that these programs um, are kept um, within the community and that are not owned by the public administration. It's, um, it's, it is a, a program that is born uh, being common, being belonging to the commons, if that is a um, sentence, and we are exploring ways to keep it this way. I think um, it's worth maybe mentioning a slightly different um, take. We've been working on it, Nesta, um, because there are a couple of things that I think are just really practical that we need to start doing if we're going to have any scale on this. One is around just like making extremely appealing um, services, uh, which sounds a very basic thing to say, but it's um, maybe looking for where there are opportunities around the kinds of services and the way that cooperatives can provide those services. Um, for example, we're looking at projects in care and creative industries at the minute because there seems to be something like around that which is not being serviced fully by market-based uh, solutions to that. So there's a little way in there. And by doing that, you're making it very appealing to you know, your individual who might then participate in that market. And then there's a second um, sort of strategy, which is about uh, looking for um, public sector type market failure where it's not being serviced effectively. So um, you're thinking again, so from the creative industry side to the caring side where you've got some challenges there around that business model is not stacking up for you know the way it's currently been provided. So what is it that um, platform plus cooperative technology can provide us you know, with a new opportunity, a new way of doing things that we'll be able to sort of find an inroad or a niche. So I think there's something about spotting and making the most out of what those opportunities are, um, at least in this first wave of um, change. So I think those, those are two things. I don't know if we've really answered the collective um, question which came um, from a little bit closer up front. Well, that was around um, shareable microservices and um, you know, is that something that we should be um, thinking about? Do you want to uh, yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah, of course there is a need to, uh, to share the knowledge because um, there are different networks and they don't, uh, I think they don't talk enough, but it's also hard when you've got this local community to uh, constantly uh, be in, con in touch with uh, what people are doing in other uh, countries. I mean, 
I really wish that the, there is a more uh, structured uh, network, and I think it's uh, really important. Uh, however, on, on, yeah, on the other side, I think it's also interesting that finally these communities are focused on also on different uh, issues. For example, in France, Platform en Commun is more about the models and the collective uh, reflection about uh, uh, business model. Um, legal uh, structures and yeah sharing knowledge and maybe in other countries there are also initiatives more focused on uh, on like for example incubators for platform co-ops or uh, more technical uh, tools so i think these uh, so yeah these networks are complementary and need to uh, definitely need to uh, to communicate more okay fantastic i think we've got time for just another couple of questions there's a Jump in the white shirt, and then someone just behind who had their hand up. I think this lady had yeah. Yeah. Oh, quite. See you. Sorry. Yeah. Hi. Um, to what extent do you think the Commons should replace government? <laughs> Great question. I'm going to give them a moment to think about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, please. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't quite see you at the back. Um, I hope it hasn't been asked already, I mean, presented already, because I only came at the end. Um, but it was triggered by the previous response and the question before about uh, scaling up or the question of how it deals with the state um, and other kind of, you know, municipality models. Um, but I was thinking, how, how is the Commons also questioning um, who it brings into the room to have a discussion about exactly that. Like, how do you know the kinds of services that you want to provide if the people who need those services are not in the room having the conversation? So I guess it's a question about how, how is that being addressed in the platforms that you're working with? Okay. Great. Um, uh, I'm not going to say it's a yes or no question exactly, but um, commons, replacing government. <laughs> how, how far do we go on this? So... <laughs> There's no metric to give given over here, and I don't think that anyone will, in the history of the universe, be qualified to answer that question. I will posit, though, that you have government and you have governance. And maybe instead of absentee governance made on your behalf by the government, the onus is on us to take that ownership of that governance. We have examples like Barcelona, and we have other more theoretical examples of what a common state would be like. We can chat after that afterwards. How much? Man, circumstances change. And so <laughs> I think government kind of needs someone's help at the minute. That's my view. But uh, yeah, does anyone else want to dare to come in on, on, on the government question? No, holding back. Well, may, we we, may, on, we on. may have an answer with uh, yes. one uh, legal status that appeared in France uh, some years ago about uh, multi-stakeholder co-ops. I, I'm not saying it's uh, the answer to everything, but what's interesting that this model is... Uh, getting yeah, more and more common, and it uh, involves different types of stakeholders. Uh, you, you must have uh, those, uh, the employees and the people who benefit from the COP, but uh, another uh, possibility is to involve as a, a stakeholder uh, group the public authorities. And uh, this is really common, actually, to, we, we see it uh, quite, uh, quite a lot. And uh, spe- specifically, when you've, you have a, an initiative, a co-op, dealing with a, a territorial uh, issue, then, the, for example, the municipality or the region uh, takes a share in the co-op. And I think it's a, somehow a, a public commons partnership, uh, which is quite interesting. Yeah, I think that's something that we've been thinking quite a bit about it, uh, in, in our work at Nesta and um, I think that it's definitely not about replacing government, but government and, and services are creaking at the seams and we need new ideas, and new innovations, and maybe the Commons may have a role to play in um, sort of supporting uh, you know, new ways of working and evolving how that's working, because at the minute you know, we're really struggling. So I think there's, um, there's some potential there to actually be quite complementary if we can find the right way to do culture change within government as well. Um, the question about who is in the room um, when we're thinking about um, some of the services I mentioned. Um, If you haven't already met Equal Care Co-op, they're a a nice example that we're working with, uh, which is multi-stakeholder co-op. It's in its its infancy, really. 
uh, but it's trying to involve people who are going to receive care as well as people who are pro care providers so that you sort of like have the voices in the room of people who've like experienced it and been there so that you, you know that you're um, also reaching the professionals as well who work on the ground and the commissioners. So, I mean, I think that does make yeah. sense as a Can you say again? Method. Um, yeah, equal care co-ops, equal care co-ops. Um, it's just an early stage example, but um, it's one that's well worth a look because they're really thinking deeply about how you do this um, in a meaningful way. Uh, they're starting to use um, a platform uh, that's been available on open source. I think it was powering Loconomics to help manage how they um, do decision making. Of obviously Lumio, because you know who wouldn't. Um, so uh, add yes. Uh, and also tomorrow there is one of the sessions in which um, it's going to be uh, talking about uh, the Commons Cloud, which is a platform in which the um, users are stakeholders. So maybe you'll be interested in what um, is going to be said then about that, about that specifically. I'm just going to take that one question at the back, and then that's going to be it, because we have to go back into the main hall, and then uh, that's, that's everything. Thank you. OK, th this is just a quick point, really, that, that on the question of how much do, do we re link or relate to government, in the UK, there's something like 23 local councils, so at the, the, the smaller level, who've declared themselves to be cooperative councils. Mm -hmm. And they're looking to provision their services through cooperatives. And I think that's a good model to explore. You don't have to change the whole system, but if your local council is amenable to it, persuade them to become cooperative councils. And they have um, put together a network, and it's called the Cooperative Councils Innovation Network, and they want to share what they're doing with each other. So they're trying to collaborate and cooperate with each other as well. So that's just an interesting point, I think. It's a really nice point to finish on. Um, do, you, do we want to say anything to that, or does it, would any, uh, any of our panel like to just say a last final word about anything because otherwise I'm very happy with maybe what we'll do is just invite people to come up and have a chat um, now because we've just got a minute or two before we go into the next session so thanks to everybody